Welcome to the wild card video for game week eight. All right, today we're going to be talking about wild cards, which teams have the best fixtures, which players should you be picking on your wild card. We're going to go through all different positions. We're going to look at the goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, and forwards. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you a couple of wild card drafts. There'll be a freemium wild card draft in there, as well as an all rounded wild card draft. And just kind of showing you the teams that I would be considering if I was on my wild card. If you are on your wild card, make sure you drop a like on the video as well. Subscribe subscribe if you're new around here. We're racing towards 1,000 subscribers. The race is on. Can we get to 1,000 subscribers before game week 10? We've been growing by about 100 subscribers every single game week. We've cracked 800. We're approaching game week 8. Can we get to 1,000 before game week 10? That's the goal. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video as well. And let's get into the wildcard video for game week 8. Now, a lot of people targeted game week eight as an ideal time to use your first wild card all the way back at the start of the season. And you can understand why when you have a look at the fixture ticker and which teams have the best fixtures for the upcoming game weeks. Chelsea's fixtures look about as good as they can get. You've got Brentford away, Norwich at home, Newcastle away, Burnley at home. Difficult fixture against Leicester and Manchester United, you could say, but you'd still be backing Chelsea in those matches. And then the fixtures get nice again with Watford away, West Ham it might be a bit of a tricky game, and then Leeds at home. Chelsea's fixture run looks so good, and if I was on a wild card, I would be very keen for a double up, if not a triple up. Brentford have that tough game against Chelsea in game week eight, but then their fixtures turn really nice. We're talking a lot about Ivan Tony and Brian and Buemo at the moment. I think they are two really great picks if you're on a wild card. I wouldn't really be put off by that first fixture against Chelsea. If you do want to have them for that fixture run, you might as well save yourself a transfer, get them in now. Brentford did score three goals against Liverpool, so there's every chance they score goals against Chelsea too. Tottenham there, not many people are talking about Tottenham. They started the season fairly slowly. Not many people were keen on their assets, but recently Son in particular has come into our thinking. He's averaging about seven points per game. He's got Newcastle away, and we know that Son can perform in the big matches. He scored that goal against Manchester City earlier in the season, and I wouldn't be put off by those tougher matches. He's got Newcastle away, West Ham and Manchester United. Then he's got Everton, Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, Norwich, and Brighton. So the fixture run in particular from about game week 11 and 12 is really nice for Son. The price point makes it a bit difficult. So if you don't go for Son on your wild card, it's going to be difficult to go up to a 10.0 midfielder. You're not really going to want to lose Salah. And I don't see many people going with a midfielder that's above Son in price. So if you are on your wild card, it's actually a really good opportunity to get Son in because not many other managers will be able to stretch to him. And those fixtures are really nice for him. So I think that Son would be a great pick. Leeds fixtures in the short term look really nice. Southampton away, Wolves at home, and then Norwich away. Definitely get Rafinha in on the wild cards. It's a shame Patrick Bamford isn't fit, but Rafinha looks to be the pick from Leeds. Manchester City, their next three fixtures are so good. Burnley at home. Manchester City's aggregate score against Burnley in the last couple of seasons is something like 25-0. They always thrash Burnley. Mares seems to be the one who gets the goals as well. I wouldn't advise going for Mares, but certainly considering two, if not three, Manchester City players for their next few fixtures would be the way to go on a wild card, particularly in defence. I think Cancelo and Diaz look incredible. But Burnley at home, Brighton away. Brighton away, I don't see too many goals being scored, but it could be a low-scoring game. So again, going for their defense. Crystal Palace at home. Manchester United away, might be some goals in that. But then their fixtures again from about 14 through to 16. Villa away, Watford away, Wolves at home. A few people are talking about Kevin De Bruyne on a wild card. He could be someone that comes into your thinking as well. Those fixtures are great. And Manchester City being one of the best teams in the league. It doesn't really matter what their fixtures are like. So far, Manchester City have had about three expected goals conceded. And they've played teams like Liverpool, Chelsea away. They've even played Tottenham. So they've had some tough games, Man City. But their defense has held up. But then the two teams down the bottom, West Ham and Manchester United. Now, I'll highlight them because their fixtures are about to turn sour. Look at United's fixtures there. They've got Leicester away, Liverpool at home, Tottenham away, Man City at home. It doesn't get much harder than that in the league. A nice fixture against Watford, but then they go back to playing Chelsea away and then Arsenal at home. If I'm on a wild card, I'm saying goodbye 
to Manchester United players. Looking at those fixtures, I don't really want to invest in any of their players. I would revisit around game week 14 and game week 15. West Ham, kind of similar. Tough games against Everton and Tottenham. Liverpool and Man City, as well as Chelsea in the next five or six game weeks. So some tough matches for West Ham. Throw European football in there as well. I think I would be tempted to keep Antonio. As I said in my earlier videos, he scored quite a few goals against the top six teams last season. He can score goals against any team in the league. But I think I would be moving away from their defense. I think I'd also be moving away from Ben Rama as well. Okay, let's talk goalkeepers. I've got a few different price points in here at the moment. Some people are talking about going with a premium goalkeeper. Edison or Mendy from Chelsea. If you do want to go with a premium goalkeeper, I would go with Edison. Thomas Tuchel sometimes gives the odd sympathy match to Kepa, and I'd hate to spend $6 million on a goalkeeper only to find that they got benched because Thomas Tuchel was feeling sorry for Kepa. So if you are wanting to spend premium budget on a goalkeeper, I would go with Edison. His distribution is absolutely lethal as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets an assist or two this season. In the game against Liverpool, he was spraying the ball over the top of James Milner's head, just finding space in behind. And I think I could see Edison getting an assist. And what an incredible thing that would be to have a goalkeeper who gets an attacking return. He is expensive and he's only making 1.18 saves per 90 minutes, which is next to nothing. His BPS baseline is pretty low as well. But have a look at that expected goals conceded. This is in the last four game weeks. They've played Chelsea and Liverpool in that time. But Manchester City's expected goals conceded is just 2.66. He's averaging five points per game, which tells you that he's getting clean sheet points and basically nothing else. He is expensive, but I can see the logic in going for someone like Edison. If you have Cancelo, Diaz and Edison and Manchester City keep a clean sheet, that's at least 18 points from three players. A lot of other people will have one, maybe two Manchester City defenders. And if they keep a clean sheet, that's great. But you're getting that extra clean sheet on top of what everyone else has. So you could have three Manchester City players that are pretty much nailed. In terms of Pep Roulette, he seems to rotate the defense far less than the midfield and the front line. So you could have Edison, Cancelo, Diaz. They all keep a clean sheet, do nothing else in return. No bonus, which is unlikely, but let's just say no bonus. That's 18 points from three players. You'd take that every single day. And who's to say that Manchester City can't keep more clean sheets? When you look at their expected goals conceded, I would back them to keep clean sheets in just about any game. Edison, he is a lot of money, but I think he could be worth it. If you want to drop down a price point, you've got Meslier there from Leeds. He's making the most saves per 90 of any goalkeeper across the last four game weeks. His BPS baseline is the highest of any goalkeeper here on screen as well. Have a look at that expected goals conceded though. 7.61 in the last four game weeks isn't great. He's only averaging 2.7 points per game. The fixture run is nice for Leeds in the short term. Mesley is making the saves. He's getting decent BPS baseline but it doesn't look like the clean sheets are coming. I would probably avoid Meslier, but if you want someone in that middle price bracket, he's making the most saves and he's getting the best baseline of any goalkeeper in the league across the last four game weeks. And then we've got the two 4.6 million goalkeepers now. So they've, they've both gone up to 4.6. We've got Ramsdale and Sanchez from Brighton. If we just look at Sanchez, he's only making 1.66 saves per 90. His BPS baseline is the worst of all goalkeepers here on screen. So it's just reinforcing what we already know. His expected goals conceded is quite nice though. Just 3.68 in the last four games. He's averaging 3.5 points per game. With Sanchez, it's either a six-pointer or a two-pointer. The fixtures, though, in the short term are pretty difficult. You can see there he's got Manchester City and Liverpool in two of the next three games. The best 4.6 or 4.5 option, in my opinion, is Ramsdale. Interestingly, Arsenal have one of the worst expected goals conceded across the whole season. Something like 12 goals conceded or expected goals conceded across the la across the whole season. But in the last four game weeks, they've got one of the best expected goals conceded of just 3.85, which goes to show you the incredible difference that not only Ramsdale, but the whole defensive change has made to their team. They've got Tommy Asu and Ben White, who are really playing well. And there seems to be such a camaraderie and togetherness about the Arsenal defense right now. He's making 2.1 saves per 90 minutes, which is pretty good. 13.84 BPS baseline, a really nice expected goals conceded, averaging six points per game with some nice fixtures coming up. 
If you wanted to spend 4.5 or 4.6 on a goalkeeper, my advice would be to go to Ramsdale. So out of all the goalkeepers on screen, I would say that Ramsdale would be my number one choice. Edison would be my number two, Sanchez three, and Meslia four. Okay, let's talk premium defenders. If I'm on a wild card, I'm tempted to go with all four of these guys. However, I'd probably just end up going with the two City defenders and Rudiger. I still think Azpilicueta is a great shout. Rudiger is the cheapest of the defenders on screen. They are premium price. And it's very likely that they will go up in price before the Game Week 8 deadline. You can see on screen that Azpilicueta has created the most chances in the last four game weeks, although it's quite close between all four players. Have a look at the expected goal involvement, though. This is where Azpilicueta really stands out, as he's been playing in that right wing-back role, particularly in that game against Southampton. At this time, we don't really know when Reese James returns. If Reese James is very likely to return for Game Week 8, I think that kind of diminishes Azpilicueta's appeal. However, if Reese James is going to be missing Game Week 8 and maybe even Game Week 9, I think Azpilicueta becomes a fantastic shout. Azpilicueta has the best expected goal involvement of 1.52 across the last four game weeks. Rudiger there with the lowest, although it's interesting, Rudiger's expected goal involvement is much the same as Cancelo and Diaz. Cancelo and Diaz have exactly the same. Cancelo's output, though, at 6.2 points per game is far superior to the rest, even though his expected goal involvement is quite low. So it's interesting there that Cancelo is getting the returns, even though the expected data is suggesting that perhaps he shouldn't be involved in as many goals as he has been. Now, he has gotten a few fantasy assists where he's had a shot and it's rebounded to a player who's then scored. So it's important to keep that in mind when you see the assist column with some points in there. Cancelo's assists haven't been what we can, what we call a pure assist, but he's still getting the points nonetheless. And 6.2 points per game. He's hitting exactly what his price is at the moment. Ruben Diaz, 5.5. He is probably the most nailed on Manchester City player. Although I think Cancelo runs him very close with the issues around Mendy. Zinchenko's been out injured. And even if Zinchenko was to return, Cancelo can play on the right. So Ruben Diaz and Cancelo look to be two pretty secure ways into the Manchester City defence. And you definitely want to get in on their defense. Look at that expected goals conceded. Just 2.66 across the last four is incredible. So getting at least one Manchester City defender is essential on your wild card. I'd even go as far to say that you need two. Maybe just the one Chelsea defender. Question marks now around Alonso and Chilwell means that they're a no-go for me. Christensen just isn't nailed to the point that I would like him to be. So I would go with Rudiger and then Azpilicueta would be my number two choice. So if I'm ranking these four defenders on screen, Cancelo number one, Diaz number two, Rudiger number three, and Azpilicueta number four. Here are a range of budget defenders that you could pick as your fifth defender to help you afford those four premium defenders. That target's probably pushing what I would consider to be a budget defender at 4.8. However, with his new position playing a left wing back role, similar to what I said about Matty Cash in the last wildcard video, he's creating a lot of chances. He's getting a really high expected goal involvement. So I think Matt Target could be a fantastic shout. However, I want to get a budget defender to help me afford the premiums. I would look no further than Livramento. His expected goals conceded is a little bit worse than Shane Duffy, for example, at Brighton, and even Ben White at Arsenal. And he's just not getting the same amount of points as Duffy. However, when you look at Southampton's fixtures for the next 10 or so game weeks, they go on an incredible run. Even look at the next three games. We've got Leeds, Burnley, and Watford. So I think Livramento at 4.2. Duffy runs him close as a budget, and I think Ben White certainly does as well, but he's probably a little bit too much for what I would want to spend for a budget defender, but I think Livramento is the best budget defender. He would be my fifth defender, and I would have no problems in playing him when you have a look at Southampton's fixtures. He even got the assist against Chelsea away, got into the box, did chill well with some nice skill, won the penalty. So Livramento has something going forward as well, even if Southampton aren't keeping the clean sheets. I would go with Livramento as my budget defender. All right, now looking at midfielders. Salah's not on the screen because Salah is an absolute lock. If you don't have Salah in your wild card, get him in right now. But then you need to fill out the other spots. The fifth midfielder that I would go with would be Brownhill from Burnley. 4.4. Don't worry about how much attacking returns he's going to get compared to someone like Douglas Louise or Sissoko. He's 0.1 cheaper than any of the other 4.5 million midfielders. Make the saving and spend that money elsewhere. How many times in FPL 
do we find ourselves 0.1 short of the transfer we want to make? If you get Brownhill in, that might mean you can make that transfer later on. So just get Brownhill in as your fifth midfielder. So we've got Salah at one end. We've got Brownhill at the other. We need three more spots to fill for our midfield. The third spot that I would go with would be Rafinha. As I've mentioned before, Leeds fixtures are really nice over the next eight or nine game weeks. He's got the best expected assist of anyone on screen level with Zaha. His expected goals isn't too bad either. And he's averaging 4.4 points per game at 6.6. I think Rafinha is still great value. I would get him in on my wild card. And then we have two more spots to fill. And it really depends on how you want to structure your team. I think Son, as I've said before with the fixtures, is a great pick. He's got some easy fixtures coming up, but I would even back Son in the tough fixtures Scored against Manchester City. Loves playing on the counter-attack. Son would be a great option. I've got Bernardo Silva there. I think he's going a little bit under the radar. He's never traditionally been an incredible FPL asset. But if you have a look at the highlights in the last few games, particularly in that Liverpool game, he ran the midfield. He created some nice chances in that game as well. And with Manchester City's next three fixtures, you need to try and think about how you find a way into the Manchester City attack. Ferran Torres could come back into our thinking. Jack Grealish has dropped in price. Even Phil Foden. So Bernardo Silva kind of represents any Manchester City midfielder that you want. What I would say about the Manchester City midfield, if you're on your wild card, is that you can kind of afford to take a punt. Yes, Ferran Torres is a punt. He's not guaranteed minutes. Neither is Foden. Neither is anyone really in that Manchester City midfield. But if the rest of your team on a wild card is strong, You've got a decent first sub. You can almost afford to go with a Manchester City midfielder as a punt. And if they get benched, that's okay. You've got coverage on the bench. But with those three fixtures coming up, it's almost worth taking a risk and trying to catch a potential haul from a Manchester City midfielder. And then we've got Brian and Buemo. He's had seven shots in the box in the last four game weeks, which is the most of any midfielder on screen, even more than Son, which is impressive. His expected assist is quite low, but Ivan Tony's expected assist is quite high. So what we're seeing is a pattern of an out-of-position midfielder playing up front. Ivan Tony, the forward, is creating a lot of chances for Brian Embuemo. Have a look at the expected goals there. 2.59 in the last four game weeks. So you've got a 5.5 million midfielder playing up top with an expected goals of two in four games. So one goal every two games. That's really, really impressive. He's only averaging 3.8 points per game. So it tells you there that perhaps he doesn't have the quality that someone like Son does, who's overperforming his expected data, only expected to get one goal, less than one assist in the last four games, but he's getting seven points per game. So Son is overperforming because we know that he's got the quality. But Brian Embuemo is getting the chances and he is scoring goals. He scored that goal against West Ham just the other day. So I think at 5.5, Yes, he's got a tough game against Chelsea coming up in game week eight. But beyond that, Brentford's fixtures look really nice. Brentford's attack is on fire so far this season. I think he could be worth a shout. And then we've got Wilfred Zaha there from Crystal Palace. He's going under the radar a little bit. Depends on your appetite for risk. I wouldn't go with Zaha and a Manchester City midfielder and Brian Embuemo. I think that's just too big of a risk. However, with Crystal Palace's fixtures beyond game week 10, they go on a really nice run about game week 12. So he could be someone to keep an eye on. All right, looking at the forwards now, and there are a lot of options. Lukaku's not on the screen because I think Lukaku should be a lock in your team with the fixtures that Chelsea have coming up. Yes, he hasn't scored a goal in quite a few games, but I think it's only a matter of time before he does start converting those chances. He got unlucky against Southampton, I thought. Jamie Vardy continues to troll all FPL managers who thought that they should go for Ronaldo or even Lukaku. 10.4, he is a difficult price to get in, but if you're on a wild card, you need to start thinking about how you can get an advantage on all of those other managers who aren't on their wild card. And going for Vardy at his price point could be a great way to do that. 12 shots in the box. He leads the golden boot race at the moment. He continues to score goals, 6.8 points per game with a 2.7 expected goals. I think Jamie Vardy is still a great FPL option. And if you're on the wild card, you can structure your team to a point where you can afford to get him in. You can afford to take that punt. Obviously, if you go for someone like Son in midfield, it would stretch your budget too much to then get Vardy, but I think he's worth considering. A lot of people talking about Armstrong from, from Southampton because of Southampton's really nice fixtures coming up. Personally, I'm not sold on Armstrong. I think he takes quite a few shots. He's got the same amount of shots in the box as someone like Tony over the last four game weeks, and they have had some tough matches. They've played Manchester City, and they just played Chelsea. So he's still getting shots off in the box, even though the tough fixtures have been there, but he's got nice fixtures coming up. 
But with the expected assists of next to nothing and expected goals of next to nothing, Yes, they have had some tough games, but I'd want to see more from Armstrong before I brought him into my team. I think Tony, at a similar price, or Huang, who's cheaper, would be a better option than Armstrong right now, despite Southampton's fixtures. If he scores a goal against Leeds and he's looking good, you can always bring him in for Burnley. Southampton have a nice, long fixture run, so... It's not as if come game week 11, the fixtures turn. You could afford to wait on Armstrong, and I think that's the, I think that's the way I would play it out. Playing has some nice fixtures in the next couple of game weeks. We saw earlier in the season that Jimenez was creating a lot of chances and setting up a lot of chances for someone like Traore, who couldn't finish his dinner, but it looks like Huang can. So Huang is getting the chances and the expected data that Traore was getting, probably not as high just yet, but in the last four game weeks, his expected goals scored is higher than someone like Tony and higher than Armstrong. So I think Wayne will continue to get chances as Jimenez performs that more creative role. So at 5.5, I think he's a great shout. Tony, tough match against Chelsea, but he can score against absolutely anyone. And then Brentford go on a really nice fixture run. So Tony would be worth considering. Watkins has re-entered our thoughts as well. It feels like it's season 2020-21 all over again. He's only getting 2.6 points per game, but I think Aston Villa are starting to create more chances and score more goals now. I think Watkins could be worth a look. However, I'm on a wild card. I'm going Lukaku. I'm very likely going Tony. And then I'm probably going to go with Jimenez or even Huang. All right, so this is a wild card draft that I would seriously consider if I was on a wild card this game week. Now, Trent Alexander Arnold is in there. We have to wait on a fitness update. If he's good to go for game week eight, I would have him in the team. If not, then maybe you could make a case for going without him. I'd just be conscious of how you get him back into your team because he is quite expensive and it might be difficult. If you spread those funds, it might be difficult to get him back into your team. But in goals, we've gone with Ramsdale. I think he's the best goalkeeper, as I said, if I was on a wild card. Trent Alexander-Arnold. We've got two City defenders. We've got Diaz and Cancelo. So basically, two guaranteed nailed-on City defenders with a high chance of a clean sheet. Cancelo with a decent chance of attacking returns. And then Rudiger, another fairly safe centre-back option from Chelsea. In midfield, we've got the three. We've got Salah, Rafinha, and Grealish. Now, doesn't have to be Grealish. I think Grealish could just be any Man City midfielder, particularly for the next three games. Could go with Foden, could go with Torres, or could even go with Bernardo Silva. It depends on which player you prefer, but I think a City midfielder is a great option. And then up front, we've got Tony, Jimenez, and Lukaku. On the bench, Smith, Rowe, Livermento, and Brownhill Foster's the bench goalkeeper. I think there's a lot to like about this team. You've got really good coverage of some of the best defenses in the league. Salah's an obvious choice. Rafinha, the best 6.5, 6.6 player in the game. Grealish for the short term, and he's a good price point as well. If he was a 5.5, million midfielder and someone from the 7.5 to 8.5 bracket came along and started performing like Jota for example then how are you going to get enough funds to get to that player but having Grealish in place means that you can easily swap to him or swap to another kind of mid-price midfielder if you need to so you've got that price point in there Tony I think is incredible especially at his price at 6.3 Jimenez with nice fixtures really for the next six or seven game weeks he doesn't need to go anywhere from your team and then Lukaku. you got Smith Rowe on the bench. You could play him. There's an argument to play him maybe uh, in this game if Tony has a tough fix against Chelsea. But Livermento is your fifth defender. is great. And then Brownhill is your budget midfielder. So if I was on a wild card, this is very close to the team that I would go with pending any team news or injuries during the international break. And I think this team is really set up well for the next few game weeks. But let's have a look at another draft that I've put together. All right, I've put together a Threemium draft just to help you think through a different option. At the start of the season, the Threemium was all about Lukaku, Ronaldo, and Salah. I think that's changed significantly. I think it's now Salah, Lukaku, and then potentially one more midfielder. If I was going to go for a Threemium, I think this is a team that you could potentially go with. I still think it's a fairly well-rounded, nice team. You've got Ramsdale and Goals. You'd have Ben White, Rudiger, Cancelo, and Trent Alexander-Arnold as your four defenders. You've got the Arsenal double up there, so that might be worth questioning. Maybe you don't want to go for the Arsenal double up. Perhaps you don't want to go for Ben White and Ramsdale just in case, look, Arsenal lose the clean sheet and you've got two players there that are blanked. But then conversely, if they do get the clean sheet, you're getting double points. So something to think about whether you want to go for Ben White or another cheaper defender. Maybe you could go for Shane Duffy, 4.3. Could be a good option if a lot of people still have Sanchez and might cover that bright and clean sheet. And then in midfield, you've got Salah, Rafinha, Smith Rowe, Brownhill, and then Kevin De Bruyne. 
is the second big hitter. As I said, I think Man City's fixtures for the next three are really nice. And what's good about this team is that you can move from Kevin Bruyne down to Son. So in the next three fixtures, Manchester City have Burnley, then they've got Brighton, and then they play Crystal Palace at home. That's when Spurs play Man United. Following that, though, Spurs fixtures get really nice. They've got Everton, while City play United. Then Spurs play Leeds. And then after that, Spurs play Burnley. So getting Kevin De Bruyne in on your wild card could be a really good shout. And then you can always move him down to Son if you wanted to around game week 10 or game week 11. Up front, we've got Huang, Lukaku, and Tony. The formation with this team is pretty flexible. You could play three at the back if Ben White had a tough match, for example. You could even play four if Arsenal had a good fixture. Livermento, we know Southampton have a good fixture, so there's potential to even go five at the back. But you could play a three or a four at the back. In midfield, you could play a four or even a three. You'd have Rafinha, Salah, De Bruyne, Smith Rowe there if Arsenal have a nice fixture. We've got the Arsenal triple up. Who would have thought Arsenal triple up in a game week eight wild card after their start to the season? The reason I've got Smith Rowe there is I just think at 5.3 he's incredible value. You're not expecting too much, but at 5.3, that's great. And then you've got Huang, Lukaku, and Tony up front. So you could play with the two up front. Or you could even go with a three. So this formation, this team is so flexible. Every single player is playing. You wouldn't go for steer and goals. Of course, you'd just go for Foster as your second goalkeeper. But you could play five, four, three at the back. You could play a four or a three in midfield. And then you could play a three or a two up front. So I really like the flexibility that this team gives you. Obviously, budget depending um, whether you can afford this team. But if you didn't want to go for De Bruyne from the start, you could go for Son and get Son in there instead. And then that gives you 2 million roughly, give or take, to upgrade a different player. So you could upgrade Ben White at this stage and get Ruben Diaz in. Or you could even get rid of Ramsdale and you could get Edison in if you wanted to play that game. So 2 million in the bank. Lots of money. You could upgrade Smith Rowe to a Man City midfielder if you like. Ferran Torres could be an option. So I think this is a pretty viable threemium wildcard draft. You could go with Son. You could go with De Bruyne. If I was going to go with a threemium, I'd be tempted to go with Kevin De Bruyne and then downgrade him to Son around game week 10 or game week 11. I think one of the advantages of doing that is that those people who aren't on a wild card will not be able to create that team. They will not be able to get Kevin De Bruyne in unless they made huge sacrifices elsewhere. So when you're on the wild card, you want to be thinking about, well, how can I get an advantage? How can I get my team to a point that makes it very difficult for those who aren't playing a wild card to be able to catch me or to be able to match my team? And I think if you go with a freemium, there's a potential there to get the to get De Bruyne in, to get your team to a point where it's still well-rounded. You're not sacrificing too much else. Really, the only sacrifice between the freemium and the traditional wildcard draft, if you like, is the second city defender. So with the freemium uh, and Kevin De Bruyne, you're going with Ben White in defense over Ruben Diaz. And then the question is, what's better? Going with Ben White and Kevin De Bruyne or going with Ruben Diaz and a Grealish, or Ruben Diaz and a Jota. So it's worth thinking about whether you want to go with the three-man option. I wouldn't begrudge anyone going with the three-man option, especially with someone like Kevin De Bruyne, who we know is pretty much nailed. And with City's next three fixtures, it could be worth a shout. All right, that is the wildcard video for game week eight. We've had a look at a couple of drafts. We've had a look at the freemium and even the more traditional wildcard draft team as well. We've gone through each position, the goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, and forwards, and highlighted who I think I would consider if I was on a wildcard, who I think you should consider on your own wildcard. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe as well if you haven't. I will be posting more videos throughout the international break. The race to 1,000 subscribers is on, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.